Hi everyone. In this video, we are discussing a medium difficulty interesting graphical interpretation question. I have the introduction to the graph on this slide, the line graph on the next slide and then the questions following the graph on the slide after that. Let's first process the introduction and the graph together and then we can think about processing the questions and how we are going to go about answering the questions. Right, let's just jump, jump right in. The graph shows the number of heritage sites. Heritage sites are physical locations that promote the understanding of the cultural heritage of a region. Okay, so we're quickly realizing something at this stage when we're reading the introduction. We have a term heritage sites and that term has been explained and defined for us within the brackets. You're noticing there are a couple of more brackets coming up. One call you can take at this stage for the sake of better time management is to say, I will come and look at this definition a little later if a need arises when I am looking through the question. I know the definitions are here. I don't have to necessarily look at it right now. So you can just say that the graph shows the number of heritage uh, sites, biosphere reserves, skip, 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 and intangible cultural heritage elements. So these are the three things that the graph is showing that are all under the preservation and maintenance control of an international organization. So one specific organization is maintaining and preserving three different types of things and the graph is showing those three different types of things. Let's look at the graph. We see that there is a line for each of the three different things. So world heritage sites are uh, in the blue line, biosphere reserves are in the red line and intangible cultural heritage elements are in the dark blue line. And there are labels that tell you on the x-axis you have five years. The y-axis seems to be just the numbers um, and you have the labels telling you exactly what numbers we are looking at. Straightforward enough graph for us to understand. Right, now let's look at the questions. We have two questions that can be answered independently because they are two different sentences altogether. Graph questions are always fill in the blank questions. Now in the test, there will be a drop down box here. You will have to click on the drop down box to see the options. But here the options are laid out for you separately because I cannot have a drop down box on a PowerPoint presentation. Now, um, you have four options here for both the questions. You don't have to have four options all the time. You don't have to have the same number of options for the two blanks within a question. You can have anywhere from three to five blanks, three to five answer options, sorry, per blank. All right. Let's read the first statement and let's just process that before we go on to the second one. The year in which the number of heritage sites under the control of the organization, so this is about heritage sites which was our light blue line, saw the greatest percentage year on year growth. So we are talking about heritage sites increasing by the highest number, okay, was blank. Have a quick look at the blanks in the state so that you better understand how you are supposed to fill the sentence and complete it was the same year, one before, one after, two before, okay. So in relation to something else, we are seeing whether it is the same year or a different year in which the number of biosphere reserves, so that's the other thing that we are seeing it in relation to, under the control of the organization saw the greatest percentage year on year growth, right. So which year did heritage sites see the greatest year on year growth? Which year did the biosphere reserves see the greatest year on year growth? And then how do these two years compare to each other? Whether the two same years was one before, one after the other year and so on and so forth is what you have to determine based on the answer options. Obviously then we need to start by figuring out those two years, right? So greatest percentage for heritage sites and greatest percentage again for biosphere reserves. Always cross verify that. You could be looking at greatest percentage for heritage sites and the least percentage for biosphere reserves for all you know. It doesn't always have to be greatest and greatest or least and least. So if necessary, you know, just make sure you are on the right track before you start the calculations. All right, I'm looking at world heritage sites. So these are my numbers. This year was a dip. So that's not my answer. 2019 was not the year in which it saw the greatest growth because it has actually dipped from 2018 to 19. Right. 2022 is also not the year in which we saw the greatest growth here, mainly because we can see this sort of steep upward line in these two years and then a little bit of plateauing between 2018 and 19. So that's not going to be the year as well. We can fear that out, which is visually looking at the graph which means the greatest growth would have happened in 2020 from 2019 or in 2021 from 2020. 
let's see what we can figure out it is the greatest percentage growth so what you are looking at for example if you are calculating 2020 year on year growth what you should be looking at is the numbers for 2020 minus the numbers for the previous year divided by the base year which would be 2019 again so world heritage site the growth for 2020 would have been 1135 minus 1080 1135 minus 1080 is a 55 point so 55 on 1080 is 2020 now just because you figured out the fraction don't immediately grab the calculator and start figuring out the percentage let's see if we can again visually figure out which one would have been the greatest percentage growth in 2021 it went from 11 1135 to 1185 so that's a 50 point growth over a base year of 1135 because the previous year is the base year right so for 2020 when our growth reached uh, when our number of units reached uh, 1135 heritage sites we had a 55 heritage site growth over the previous years 1080 and then in 2021 we're having 50 over 1135 now just look at these numbers for a quick second you don't need a calculator to figure out which one is the greatest percentage why when the numerator is higher and the denominator is lower that's going to be the higher percentage that's just how fractions and percentages work so you have a higher increase on a lower base that you started with so 2020 will be the year in which you had the highest growth rate for world heritage sites if you're just starting your preparation and you want to clarify that and you want to ensure that's correct you can input it on your calculator and check it out this will work out to just over five percent so maybe like a 5.1 percent so this is going to be under five percent because 11.3 is one percent 11.3 times five would be 55 56.5 this is going to be under five percent so this is going to be somewhere around 4.4 4.5 percent something like that right so this will be a lower percentage even once you input it into the calculator but just in case if the numerators are about the same but the denominator is smaller then that's going to be the higher percentage if the numerator is smaller and the, sorry if the numerator is higher and the denominator also happens to be smaller like in this case definitely you can take it for sure then that's going to be the higher percentage right moving on we have biosphere reserves to compare with right biosphere reserves 2020 for sure is not the year with the same uh, highest growth rate and that's because 2020 is actually a dip year right now let's see what numbers it has increased by for the other three years 701 to 724 this is a 23 point increase 714 to a 727 is a 13 point increase immediately you can roll out 2021 as well why this is a 23 point increase over a 13 point increase numerator is higher base number is a 701 base number is a 714 numerator is higher and denominator is smaller 2019 would have definitely been a higher percentage than 2021 again we don't need to calculate we are looking for the greatest percentage we already know there's at least one year greater than 2021 so we can rule that out as well right so 727 to 748 is a 21 point increase same logic that we have been discussing so far greater numerator smaller denominator the increase has to be the greatest in 2019 all right so what do we have for biosphere reserves our greatest uh, increase was in 2019 for world heritage sites our greatest increase was in 2020 compare that with the answer options that you have this is ERS 2020 this is 2019 so 2020 is one after 2019 right 2020 is the year after 2019 so that means to correctly complete the blank we want Charlie C as our answer we are not done we still have one more blank to solve that's also why we don't rush to the calculator and calculate every last number that we can on the graph but we're being a little smart about what the numbers are saying which one is higher greater what can we say by visually looking at the data rather than calculating every last data point because remember both these statements together constitute one question which means just for one of them you cannot take too much time the category with the 
least numerical greatest numerical least percentage greatest percentage growth between 2018 and 22 so across all five years is intangible cultural heritage elements so essentially between 2020 to 18 and 22 where does intangible cultural elements stand in terms of relative growth compared to biosphere and world heritage sites have a look at the graphic and immediately see something about intangible cultural elements steepest upward curve of the lot all right it has definitely increased significantly no dips in any year consistent increase and this has been the uh, sort of the most steepest line upwards so it looks like cultural elements actually grew by the largest across these three categories just to be safe let's check that right world heritage sites went from net net 1100 to 1190 so that is a 90 point increase okay um, we have biosphere reserves that went from 701 to 748 so 748 minus 701 is a 47 point increase and then you have the cultural heritage elements which went from 508 to 689 which means it went from it increased by 181 points items right okay so in terms of numerical growth cultural elements definitely has the highest growth but highest numerical is not an option for me i have least numerical which i can rule out second highest numerical which i can rule out as well which means i'm going to be looking at this definitely in terms of percentages for me to arrive at the answer now have a look at your options greatest percentage versus least percentage again the sort of the lesson that we have been reiterating the common theme across today's questions higher the numerator and the smaller the denominator then you're looking at a higher percentage this is a 90 point growth from a base of 1100 this is a 47 point growth from a base of 700 this is the highest numerical growth so highest numerator 181 point growth on the smallest of our denominators which is 508 so 101 181 over 508 is definitely going to be the highest percentage so b is your answer for the second question so there we have it by this logic of you know higher numerator over smaller denominator without using a calculator necessarily you can arrive at the answer for both the questions and they are charlie and bravo c and b are your answers